Okay, so um, today I'm going to be taking apart this wireless mouse here. You can see here's the wireless thing, and uh, here's the mouse, and we're going to be showing um, how it works. So I'm just going to remove this uh, cover here and then show you how it works. So this, this is just a voiceover, so I, I may not necessarily be talking, be perfectly linked up with the video in case explaining goes, uh, you know, over its time limit, but... Other than that, uh, it shouldn't be too bad. So this mouse was a little bit of a pain to get apart. You had to separate the top from the bottom with a screwdriver. But once that happened, uh, and you could pl unplug the battery, which is what I'm doing here, um, then it wasn't too bad. So, uh, you know, definitely if you have an old one, definitely take it apart. So this is the mouse uh, in itself. You can see pretty simple. It's just got a crystal, um, a scroll wheel, some buttons, um, that uh, diagonal black thing with the cable that's the, that I'm touching now, that's the emitter. Um, that's the scroll wheel. It's got buttons on it, um, so you can actually move the scroll wheel back, uh, left or right. So, um, what basically what I believe is that those, um, and then you can see the button that I'm pressing now in the adjacent one are just for the uh, clickers. Great tactile feedback on these things, so they, they look uh, pretty nice quality. Anyways, for this scrolly thing, um, what it, uh, the scrolly thing in the middle of those two buttons, the way it works, I think, is that they, um, there's, there's little, though, that's the detector right there, and that's an emitter, that clear thing. So this is, um, I believe what it's doing is it's sending out modulated IR through these gaps, and they can, they can tie, they can um, figure out the time between gaps to uh, see if you're rotating or if there's not any gaps in the signal. Because um, what happens is when the IR LED, um, when one of those um, plastic plates comes between the, the uh, detector and the emitter, it's, there's not going to be any signal getting through. So they're going to be able to see if you're scrolling it at all or if there's a time gap. And, if it's, if they're, and they can use the time gap to figure out how fast you're scrolling it. And I believe they, they figure out if you're scrolling it backwards or forwards by that button in the back, because if you're scrolling it backwards, your tendency is gonna be to push the wheel downwards to the back, and you're gonna end up pressing that button in the back. And then forwards, you're probably end up gonna end up pressing one of the front two left buttons or none of them at all. Because um, it didn't, what, what I would expect is some sort of like optical encoder assembly, but they only had one, um, Perhaps what it is is it's a dual det a dual emitter and dual detector. So there's two detectors in the one package, just sort of right next to each other, like your eyes, and two on the emitter, and they can tell the gap between them. And that's sort of like a makeshift rotary encoder. Uh, either that or the button. They just use the buttons to tell if you're moving it, if you're pressing the wheel back on that on that back button, the single button next to the crystal. Um, but I, I'm not sure if, if they actually have like a dual emitter and a dual detector arrangement to get like an opto uh, encoder or if they have just using the buttons to figure out where the pressure is. Either way would probably work just as well, although the optical encoder way is probably a bit more expensive but also a bit more reliable. But it's it's interesting to see how they did that just by, you know, figuring out the times and the gaps. That's not the first way. I would have thought to just put a regular optical encoder inside the wheel, but I guess they decided... Uh, that they'd either do what I just said, the external version or the uh, button version. I, I don't know. I, I can't think of any other reason why there's buttons at all. So could be very well be. And this right here is um, the uh, the lens thing right there that I'm popping off. That is the um, the emitter. So this is this is actually what emits the um, what figures out how you're moving the mouse around on the table. Um, the mystery with this thing is there's only two connections for an IR LED that we're going to see in a second. And um, the problem is that there's no detector, and I can't find a detector anywhere on the board. You can see there's only two leads going to one IR LED. I can't find a detector on this board anywhere. It, it really perplexes me. I, I just I can't figure out what they've done to get the detector. And I'm trying to follow the path now of the LED, and one of them I can actually follow back to a, um, a chip right there. And then here you can see this, this on the top is just the wireless antenna um, that connects to the USB chip. Uh, this short length of the antenna will explain why this, this had such short range. 
You can see here's the matching antenna. I'll show this in uh, this little piece in more clarity later, but you can see the matching antenna sort of snakes its way around there on the um, USB dongle. So really on this thing, there's there's not too much. They need that one chip there, and there's a one surface mount uh, chip above the uh, hole, and that chip is probably custom or wireless. Um, actually, come to think, it was probably not wireless because the wireless chip would be the black wireless chip sitting close to the antenna. Anyway, this is my test of the uh, IR LED here. Uh, sorry if there's shadows, but I needed it so you can see. You can see here, I'm turning it up. It's it's very faint. I have the voltage in the, somewhere in the 2 volt range during this whole, whole thing. Uh, but as you can see, this lens sort of just gives you a nice clean dot um, on the IR LED. It's, it's pretty concentrated. Uh, whereas, you know, regular LED spits light everywhere. This sort of makes it semi-laser-like, pretty coherent. Um, I don't know why that you need why you need that for a mouse. I'm I'm not sure. Um, I'm actually not really sure of the normal operating of optical mouses. Usually, I believe they have a, like some sort of detector and emitter, and that senses um, if you're moving it. But I, I'm not quite sure how. But this one, like I said, there's no detector, so that's the real mystery. Uh, also, most regular mouses use red light. I don't know if that's because. Uh, that's just so you can see it, or and they're actually also using IR, or if um, if they if this one just uses IR in place of red light, I don't know. But uh, so nothing really super special here, except for the the lens, which is probably just like a regular magnifying glass lens, probably something similar to that. But the real mystery is how they used a detector, and I had a hypothesis. You can see 2.25 volts. Um, but I had a hypothesis is that they were actually modulating the signal and somehow the signal would bounce around and actually come back because you can use an LED to detect its own frequency. You can use an LED as a light sensor. I have a video. I did it way, way long ago about that. So I had a theory that maybe they were using the, like making the light bounce back between the lens uh, a few times and they had like a square wave with really fast edges and um, they could actually use the IR LED to sense so basically in the square wave, in the bottom trough of the square wave, they would sort of get some sort of signal due to the bouncing back of the light and the LED in, in interpreting that in voltage. But I tried that. My square wave didn't have particularly fast edges. Uh, in fact, they were pretty slow. They were like 20 microseconds. So real short edges, but that's the best I could do with the voltage I needed to run this LED. And, oh, I just blew it, by the way. So I didn't have another chance to test it. This is the wireless dongle. You can see there's just a crystal and an antenna, and it just fits right in. Nothing really special. But um, back to the R LED. So I didn't really have fast edges, uh, but even then, it didn't it didn't do anything. So uh, I, I would have expected some sort of uh, some. Oh, that's a light pipe too. Just using it for. LED. I would have expected some sort of response in the trap trough or even on the descending edge in my square wave. I took a video, but it's not worth showing because nothing happens. There's, there's nothing. Uh, and again, since I blew the IR LED in the video, I had to use a second one. So my either the IR LED in the video is sort of like one of those dual color ones, except you know how you reverse the polarity and it's a different color. Except this time you reverse the polarity and it's a sensor, so they can reverse the polarity and sense it. I'm not quite sure how they did it. There's no sensor on the board. That's a mystery to me. So thanks for watching.